show your support, like, share and subscribe. Hello, I am That British Guy and welcome to another booking video. This time, however, we're going to do things slightly differently and we are going to rebook an existing storyline, namely the debut of Paige on the main roster. Now, as you may know, when she debuted the night after WrestleMania 30, she won the Divas title from AJ Lee, ending her, at the time, record-long uh, title run. She held the belt for a few months, dropped it to AJ Lee, and then kind of won it back very, very quickly, and then lost it again very, very quickly. Nikki Bella kind of worked her way into the feud, and the title picture kind of moved over to Nikki and AJ for a time. Nikki then won the belt and kind of held on to it for a record-breaking amount of time, breaking AJ's record. Paige was kind of relegated to a more kind of secondary role, they did have a match, AJ and Paige, against the Bellas at WrestleMania, which they won. She then kind of disappeared for a little while before becoming the main challenger for the belt. But come late spring of 2015 was when we got the revolution and Charlotte and Sasha and Becky came up to the main roster and they tried to really shake things up within the women's division and she was then kind of relegated to a minor player shall we say. She initially aligned with Charlotte and Becky and then they all sort of turned on each other and then obviously by the time we get to Wrestlemania she's not even involved. She's in some kind of multi-person, I think it was like a five on five tag match or something or it might have even been a battle royal, I'm not sure. Then obviously she goes out injured for a long time. Obviously I'm not going to be booking all of that but her initial call up was amazing, she won the belt like that, but then not really holding on to it for very long and was constantly put over as this kind of fluke champion, losing the belt and then winning it back and losing it, not a great look and then kind of just being overshadowed when the kind of main crop of NXT people came up the following year. Massive, massive shame, seen as she was the first ever NXT Women's Champion and never actually lost the belt. They had to remove it from her because she got the call-up to the main roster. Obviously, when she came back after her injury, there were plans, it would seem, to really kind of push her right up to the top of the card again. But unfortunately, she had to retire due to injury, what might have been. So, how are we going to do things slightly differently? First off, when she comes out the night after WrestleMania 30, let's have her come out with the NXT title, shall we? Immediately, this puts her on a huge pedestal because she's actually coming out with a belt, much like they did with Kevin Owens the following year. Also, she came out to congratulate, sort of, AJ on her win and her kind of title length that she'd had at the time and it was a bit weird because like hi AJ I'm this random character that nobody knows I thought I'd just come out here and congratulate you on being the Divas champion why not have her come out as a champion and sort of say look you're a champion I'm a champion you did excellently at WrestleMania last night and I just want to say I kind of obviously know what it's like being in that position and I really admire what you've done with your title run so far. Speaking as champion to champion we're kind of on an equal footing here. Obviously that can then give AJ reason to kind of shoot Paige down a bit more because she sees this as kind of interrupting her moment and who the hell are you anyway and that then feeds into the surprise title match a lot smoother shall we say obviously she can win in pretty much the same sort of manner and then be a double champion moving on from this why not have her come out still with the nxt women's championship she was still sort of technically on NXT at the time and she didn't get the belt removed from her until just before the Extreme Rules pay-per-view. 
So when she does come out at Extreme Rules without that, they can make a really big deal of the fact that she hasn't got the NXT women's title anymore. It's not because she lost it, it's because she's now spending all of her time on Raw and SmackDown. She can't defend the NXT women's title anymore. And instead of JBL taking the belt off of her, have her decide to graciously give the belt back for the women's division. Not just, oh, you're not here anymore, can we have this back please? That then puts her over as kind of a champion for the people. The fact that she's still got NXT interests in mind and the fans in mind and the women that are working down there. I would defend this belt but I can't split myself between NXT and Raw and Smackdown and defend the Divas title and defend the NXT women's title. It's too much. So here you go, here's your belt back, look after it for me and treat it well. She did face off against Tamina at Extreme Rules and I've got no real issue with that. Why not though have this as an Extreme Rules match and I'm not expecting it to be kind of ladder spots and table spots like we have now because we weren't really doing that in 2014 but a few bits with sort of a kendo stick or a chair or into the still steps, a few bits and pieces, because she did take quite a few nasty looking bumps to try and kind of put over this different way of working. And also, why not have Tamina, because she was kind of AJ's heavy at the time, have that as kind of the main reason as to why these two are feuding for the title? Almost like Tamina's trying to do it for AJ, to prove to AJ that she's worthy of it, and to also put Paige in her place. Instead, she ended up just winning a random battle royal on the main event. Cool, thanks for that. No, 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 no. Have Tamina kind of attacking Paige beforehand and maybe introducing a couple of these weapons and that's why Paige decides, hey, it's extreme rules, let's get extreme then. The match itself can kind of go pretty much as it did, but without the commentary putting her over as a fluke champion. And for the win, instead of her usual submission, the PTO, the page tap out move, let's have the kendo stick in there as well through the kind of chicken wing arms and pulling back on that. Just to kind of add that little bit of extreme to it, just puts over Paige as kind of this thinking wrestler and the reason that this was an Extreme Rules match as well. Let's actually play that into the finish. Now from here she went on to defend her belt against Alicia Fox and then Naomi before dropping it back to AJ Lee the night after the Money in the Bank pay-per-view. Nah, let's forget about that. Again, Alicia Fox, no real issue with her. She is a former Divas champion anyway, so kind of makes sense that she is still in contention for the belt. And don't forget this is long before Charlotte and Becky and Bailey and Sasha. And as well, Natalia is working on NXT to try and put over the tournament for that belt over there. So she's kind of not really around too much at the moment. So let's have Alicia Fox, but let's not have her beat Paige in a non-title match in England two weeks before the pay-per-view. Let's have her legitimately win a number one contenders match. And let's put Paige against these other former Divas champions. Put over the fact that she should be on this level. She's facing off against former champions, people that have won this belt that she just come in and took from nowhere that we didn't see. So... Put that over in the match. Again, none of the fluky champion stuff. None of the, oh my god, she's really, really pale stuff. Put over the fact that she's a very, very good wrestler, even though she is still only 21. And she's holding her own against these former champions. After Alicia Fox, we've got the likes of Layla still. She is a former Divas champion. Brie Bella, she is a former Divas champion. I'm kind of wanting to keep away from AJ Lee and Nikki Bella for obvious reasons because that's sort of where the storyline will need to go in the future. If Natalia is back on the main roster by this point, have her go against her as well. Kind of maybe even a submission match potentially because it was nice that Naomi got a shout but this was kind of Funkadactyl Naomi and that's very far removed from the Naomi we see on the main roster at the moment. And again, 
she wins her kind of title shot by pinning Paige. None of that. Try, if possible, to not have her lose, or if she's losing, it's because of kind of interference, things like that, dodgy kind of decisions, or she's losing in tag matches where her partner is the person getting pinned. So this all leads up to SummerSlam where she finally faces off against AJ. AJ comes back and kind of demands her rematch. And instead of taking the belt back from Paige in the same way, kind of like surprising her into a title match and then winning it back to kind of mirror how Paige does, let's have Paige kind of outsmart her and say, no, 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 we're not going to be doing that. We'll have the match at a pay-per-view as we should be doing which is on her 22nd birthday, and that's where AJ Lee wins the belt back. This obviously will kind of trigger something within Paige. She has lost this belt that she's held for quite a few months now. She's lost it on her birthday as well, so she can get a little bit more savage. And instead of getting her rematch at Night of Champions, maybe she tries to get it the night after and fails to do so. And instead of then just having Paige versus AJ as we did for months and months and months on end, maybe with kind of Nikki Bella shooed in there a little bit as well, AJ can kind of do other bits and pieces with the belt whilst Paige is kind of getting more and more frustrated, trying to get these opportunities to get back into the title hunt. Maybe this means that she isn't featured on pay-per-views as much. Maybe she is, maybe she isn't. Chances are there won't be two diva matches on the pay-per-view and the belt should really be defended. So if that means she takes a couple of pay-per-views off, then never mind. But we can feed into the fact that she is trying to get this belt back by any means necessary. Ultimately, this leads to a Survivor Series match, a triple threat, with Nikki and AJ. Now obviously in the main timeline this is where Nikki picks up the belt. We kind of want to hold off on that a little bit here if we can. This keeps Paige away from the 8 Diva match where her team lost complete clean sweep. It was She was the last to go but her team lost all of their members and didn't pick up a single pinfall or submission against the opposing team. Don't really want any of that. Ideally, we can have her picking up the belt here and kind of transitioning into a feud with Nikki Bella and ultimately being screwed out of the title by sort of Royal Rumble, Fast Lane, which can then lead into the WrestleMania match that they did ultimately have that her and AJ Lee did win. It kind of makes that have a bit more sense to it because she sort of threw herself back into these matches with the Bellas come Royal Rumble after missing TLC and it, it kind of was a little bit disjointed slightly. So for her to win the belt and then kind of transition into a feud more with Nikki Bella to then be beaten by Nikki Bella, say at Royal Rumble and then try to be getting the belt back at Fast Lane, and then we get the tag match at WrestleMania. This is when she then kind of goes on a one woman assault against the Bella Empire if you like. And that can then feed us back into the normal storyline, Divas Revolution, blah 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 blah. This way she is going up against legitimate competition all the time. It is being put over the fact that she should be on a par with these women. They are all former champions that she's dealing with and she's managing to handily beat them. Slipping in a nice sort of extreme rules match or a submission match as well. Trying to put these sorts of matches on par with what we're seeing on the men's side of things as well. Before we actually get to the Divas Revolution. That can't hurt. And even just from the beginning, having her come out as a champion and facing off against AJ Lee as a champion immediately kind of puts her in the minds of the audience as on par because they're both holding WWE gold. Or silver, because they both are kind of silvery colour, but you know what I mean. Rather than just as this random person that a lot of the audience wouldn't be aware of and why she's being able to be put into this position. So there we go, that is my sort of rebooking of the debut of Paige on the main roster. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you have any other ideas for storylines for me to rebook or ideas to actually book for future, 
please let me know in the comments below as well. But until next time, I have been That British Guy, and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.